Is there a horsepower difference between winter blend and summer blend fuels? Let's find out. Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. back with Dino Dom McCaskill, Shaver Racing Engines. We're here in the Dino Cell, and today we had, I wouldn't call it an epiphany, but we had a confirmation of something we've kind of seen for... At least five times before. Right. And what we're talking about is the difference between winter blend and summer blend fuels. I'm sure you've heard of that term before, but today we experienced the effects of that change in seasonal blends, and it was quite dramatic, Don. It was, and one of the things that we should have thought about beforehand, I should have thought about, not every state does this, or not every state's required to change their blends. Here in Southern California, mm -hmm. we are. So they, they, they put some stuff in the gas to make it less polluting, right. which is great, but it also makes it less efficient. And one of the reasons why, how I can tell this, I drive the same route every day, the same car, the same way every single day. And in the last, oh, probably almost about a month now, I have my mileage in my car has gone down about three miles per gallon. Right. It's not because the car needs a tune-up. It's because they changed the blend of the gas again. Exactly. And on this dyno, on this engine, which, by the way, we have literally thousands of dyno pulls on this engine exactly. here in this location and we always go to the same gas station every single time and get the yeah. same gas we've seen with that level of consistency of detail you know, same oil same fuel same all those things yeah. it'll normally vary you know five to seven foot pounds mm -hmm. of torque between, between winter time and summertime. Right, because a lot of times we'll be out here in you know early February, late January, maybe exactly. even early March yeah. doing tests. But then you get back and it's maybe late May, early June doing tests. That's a pretty normal cycle for us. Mm -hmm. So it crosses that bridge between the winter blend and summer blend fuels. And we know that, hey, you're going to see the, the torque change and all that. Let me, let me just make a quick point here. Sure. This Superflow Dyno does an incredible job of changing for weather temper for, for weather conditions. Yes. And the reason I know this is because I've been dynoing the same sprint car motors in the wintertime and in the summertime. I I get the same numbers at 920 horsepower. I get the same numbers on my screen in wintertime as I do in summertime, even though the weather conditions are quite different. So it's not just the weather conditions. And the great thing is here in Southern California, this shop located about what, three miles from the ocean. From the ocean, yeah. It doesn't change that much anyway. Our correction factor always stays very short. Right, so this is a very good place to do the dyno work, right, to get right. that consistency. Right. What shocked us today was that how different the fuel was having to go to a different gas station because there was construction at the gas station where we normally go to. Uh -huh. So we changed brands of gasoline. Yeah. And so now we've added a second variable. So we've yeah. gone from winter blend fuel to summer blend fuel, and now we change brands of fuel. And oh my God, it looks to be like eight to 10 horsepower difference between two months ago in today and but the thing is is what the changes the internal changes we made on this engine we know for a fact made this engine more efficient because it's better we, yeah <laughs> because we had we had we have a blow by gauge on it mm -hmm. and we assumed that because of the ring that we were using today that we were going to have less blow by we didn't realize it was going to be as good as it was we went from about between five and six cfm all the way down to two cfm so yep. we know the engine was more efficient today than it was three months ago. Exactly, so the engine itself is running more efficiently yeah. and we have data to back that up. Yes. Yet the peak power output was less only because of the change in fuel blends. Exactly. And we were able to verify that because <laughs> we always run 32 degrees of timing and we were wondering what was going on and then you came in and took two degrees of timing out. And what happened? And it picked up like four horsepower. That means the, the that means we were just on the cusp of detonation. And right. when I took the timing out, the, when the power came up after I took the timing out, that confirmed the fuel problem. Right, right so there. the same octane fuel, yep. 
But this time it's a summer blend versus a winter blend. Yep. And we change brands of fuel. All of a sudden, it changed what we needed to do exactly. for timing and everything else in the exactly. engine. Now, we were able finally to work through all that and make more power eventually by compensating for that. Yeah. But it, what all of that did was prove the fact yeah. that the fuel had changed that much yes. from the winter blend to the summer blend. Now, you may be wondering, well, why are you granting on about this? It's because this can be a hidden variable. You can be going to the same gas station and buying fuel, the same octane, but from January to say July, you can have a serious difference in the efficiency of your engine. And if you're trying to do dyno work or any kind of competition, you could be greatly compromising the performance and even potentially the durability of your engine unknowingly. Right, without knowing it. You know, the, the, the difference in fuel mileage and just in, just in driving the car for me is about three miles to the gallon. And, and, it, and it happens every single year. And, we, and it's something that we've been fighting for a long time. We're going to get rid of that variable here. We've already talked about that. Right. So going forward, we're going to be buying a specialist fuel, probably from VP. Uh, we're going to work with those guys uh, to find the right fuel for this engine, how it runs, so that we can eliminate that seasonal variable. Because what's proven to us now after years of doing this that we've noticed this in the past but it's been basically getting worse over time like that winter blend to summer blend change yeah. maybe five six years ago wasn't, wasn't as, as dramatic it wasn't as bad as it is, as now. It is now but yeah. year over year we've seen it beginning more and more and more to the point now that it's unbearable. It, yeah. It's too much of a, of a variable to have, so right. we're gonna eliminate it. So we wanted to share that information with you guys as consumers to understand what the effects of winter blend versus summer blend fuel can be exactly. so that you can make better choices in order to get the best performance and durability out of your engine. So, you know, again, this is lessons from the dyno, right? Right. You know, we learn something every time we do this. Like, we do. There's, 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 there's one or two things that we learn every single time. And after the 10 years of doing this, it's just been a blast on how much information that we've gotten that we're able to share with you guys. Right. So if you want to learn more, make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you can be up to date when we come out with new videos. Because guess what? We having so much fun doing this. We're not going to stop. There's going to be more videos in the future. So again, Absolutely. Hit the subscribe button. Again, thank you for watching.